There we go. Okay. Well, hi, Erin. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Good to see you. You too. Um, how do you find this inventory? I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was sort of, it was fun answering the questions, and then my results, I think, for the most part, were consistent with what I have, like, perceive as yeah. my interests and so skills. So no big surprises? I don't think so. I mean, okay. some of the, um, some of the career suggestions specifically were a little bit strange, like, speech yeah. pathologist was, on, like, one of the ones that I was on there. Saw yeah, that. yeah, and that was, um... According to this inventory, you might want to switch to grad programs. I'm just <laughs> kidding, but but uh, I I do wonder. Like I wanted to do some research on that and find out what exactly is it that made that your profile. I mean, you had consistently across the board that was your highest score. Yeah, it was really funny. So and also I think I was talking about this. I forget who I was talking about it with, but I was talking about it with someone that I think a lot of times to be a speech pathologist, you need more education than a master's. Yeah. yeah. And that's not, so that's a, that's a good thing to know about yourself, you know, like PhD program is like not, you know, but, yeah. you know, but maybe something to keep in the back of your mind if mid-career, you right. finish your program at grad school, you're like, mm, not really feeling it, you know, yeah, it might be a good fit. Yeah, totally. But, but yeah, cause I, uh, I can say from my personal experience, since I'm older than you, when I got out of undergrad, I was like, I'm done with school. And then here I am. Right. You know? So right. you never know. Right. Things do no, change. No, Totally. Totally. But yeah, I was, um, I mean, having our brief conversation before and knowing that you're in the grad program for school counseling, I mean, it, it's kind of hard. I mean, did you feel reassured that you're <laughs> yeah, on the right totally. track? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but then I don't, it's funny too, because I don't know how much that plays into how you answer the questions. And yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, but it, it's, I have to, your social though, there was no ambiguity there. I mean, right. you well, got that's very high. That's kind of strange too, is that. Like, very high for social. I mean, social was very high, but then, like, the next ones were, like, all, like, kind of low. Yeah, that's interesting. So, that was Do you find that's true for you? Like, when you say artistic, you're, like, in the moderate range, or do you feel that you're more artistic-leaning, like, as far as creativity and... I think I'm pretty creative. I think... I don't know how much I, like, that intersects with my jobs that I've had, but yeah. personally, like, as a yeah. hobby, I enjoy... yeah artistic type things so we'd have to it'd be interesting um i mean i don't have a breakdown of your answers but it'd be interesting to yeah. go through yeah um so somewhere in here wasn't there something that said because you answered or i could be confusing it with a netflix cue because you liked blah 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 <laughs> there was also the other thing that was funny was that in some of the like career suggestions too there were like horticulturalist and i saw um, that too that was also really strong for one? you florist yep and so that's where that one i think makes creativity, sense to like, creativity yeah. and also that i like like being outside i like working yes. my hands and i like yeah. to garden and all that stuff yeah yeah i don't really have a strong desire i don't think to do it as a profession but yeah but those are so it did pick up at least on those interests yeah yeah especially horticulturist was pretty high <laughs> yeah, it was 61 it was. so i don't know what that is really uh, yeah i know it, it would require schooling <laughs> And paralegal, as far as conventional, was the closest to anything that came up to uh, yeah. an interest area. I was surprised yeah. that conventional wasn't higher, too. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. The word itself maybe is a little bit misleading, because you think yeah. conventional is, like, kind of straight and yeah. narrow, but yeah. maybe it has a different yeah. meaning. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> so, now that we have this information, I also just wanted to get a little background information on you. Sure. Um, did your parents go to college? Yes. Um, what levels did they get? How they about both, your mom? They both just graduated from college. My mom's a nurse. She just graduated? No, no. I mean, oh. that's all they did. They, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get their master's or anything. Okay. So your mom went for nursing? Yeah, she went to nursing. She went to um, Patrick State. Uh-huh. And my dad <laughs> went to Middlebury for a year and a day, and then he dropped out because he was so homesick. <laughs> oh. And then he went, he graduated from um, Hofstra, which is on Long Island. Okay. So, he's a writer, and so... Oh. He, is that what he went to school for? No. What did he go to school for? Philosophy, I think. Okay. He... I mean, it's it's really interesting, because he always talks about how college, my brother and I, was so different than his experience. Yeah. And he really knew what he wanted to do, and if you want to be a writer, like, you just have to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And especially the type of writing that he wanted to do, it was not something that really can be taught. Yeah. And so... For him, college was sort of like this thing that he kind of had to go through and it wasn't really fulfilling okay. and or didn't expand any horizons or any of that stuff. Wow. So he yeah. didn't get anything out of philosophy studies? Mm, no. No. So. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder what was working on him as far as like, why did he feel like he needed to go to college then? Was it fulfilling some kind of parental? Probably. Yeah. And I think also oh. like he was just like, he went, 
like, he's this really unique individual that he went through a really intense transformation in his, like, late 20s and early 30s in a way that I don't know many other people did. Like, he grew up in Long Island, really sheltered, like, <laughs> you know, moved to home to, like, because he was homesick to, like, go yeah. to live with his parents and stuff, and, like, lived with his parents until, like, he moved in with my mom when they met, like, when he was, like, in his late 20s, early 30s. Wow. And, like, Long Island is just so this, like, just, no, it's okay. It's, like, it's just this, like, I don't know, it's hard to describe. People that live on Long Island, like, just, they live there. That's what they do. They don't really they don't go. Leave. Yeah. Oh, okay. In a really bizarre way. Huh. And so he now, like, he's a writer, and he loves to fly fish and hike and <laughs> read books all the time and cook, and, like, he's just this really... Like kind of person, out, good, but, outdoorsy. Yeah. Is yeah. he still in Vermont? Because it's really yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, college. I think sometimes you know, for people, college is is maybe what tr- can transform you a little bit. But yeah. for him, it was like just this thing to sort of get did. through, and then hmm. to be a writer, he took other did other things. Yeah. yeah. So was Vermont? Was he ended up in Vermont because of your mother. Or? Yeah. So they okay. met. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So his mom. And what type of writing does he do? Um, so his, like, passion is fiction, so he writes novels. Uh-huh. Um, is he published? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's written, I'm trying to remember, like, close to 16 books. Wow. Yeah, so he has, like, some essays, some books of, of essays, short stories, um, nonfiction. He writes a lot about fly fishing and nature. Nice. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, and then he has some novels. Very nice. Yeah. But it's just so different than a lot of professions. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah. not, like, clear-cut steps you can take right, right. in order yeah. to do it. I know it always seems easier when you can think that a career path or just life decisions are like, but right. right. they're not always that no. way. Yeah. No. yeah. Which, having a father like that, I'm hoping will be freeing for you. you know? Well, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. This. And it has, I yeah. think. Because my brother, like, he um, wants to go to med school uh-huh. and has been, like, very driven since, wow. like, day one wow. in a way that... I haven't really, and so sometimes I've expressed that to my dad, and he's like, you know, your brother likes knowing what's next, and likes, yeah. like, knowing that if he does this thing, this will happen, and yeah. that's comforting to him, and yeah. I'm not really that way, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is your mom more that way? Like, like my brother? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. and the medical track right. similarities, yeah. too. Yeah. So sense. your mom, it sounds like, so she went to school for nursing, and she's been set ever since, kind yeah. of thing? Has she yeah. gone through, like, a, maybe I should switch careers, or is she just... She... Oh, it's really interesting, because, um... She wanted to be a psychiatrist, I think. Mm-hmm. But my grandfather told her, like, he would pay for her to go to school to be a nurse or a secretary. Mm-hmm. And so, like, gender was a very big factor yeah. in the profession that she chose. Yeah. You know, nursing is primarily a, still a female yeah. profession. Yeah. Um, and so, and she's only one, I don't know why, but she's only one of her siblings who went to a state school. And so, mm-hmm. all the other ones went to private schools, so. I don't know. She wasn't the only daughter, was she? No. Nope. Okay, all right. <laughs> No. Huh. And so, and two of the other daughters have masters, but I think we're things they probably paid for on their own. Anyway. Oh. Um, and is your mom, like, older, she's younger? She's exactly in the middle. Oh, they're okay. So there's kind of three younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, so how's that played into your, um, like, college aspirations and career? Is your mom, like, more feminist leaning now? Like, you well, can have the funny. world? Or is now, she... that, now that I'm thinking about it. There, I remember when I was looking at colleges, she wanted me to look at Mount Holyoke, and uh-huh. I was like, no way. It's all over. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> it's like, I, she had to drag me there. And then once I went there, like, she was like, please just look at it. Like, I think you'll like it. Yeah. You know, there's opportunities that you wouldn't have other places. Blah, blah, blah. So we went there, and I ended up like, falling in love with it, and I applied to the decision. And, and that's where you went. It's a great decision, yeah. But right. I, now that it's never occurred to me, but that must have been one of the reasons why. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a great school. Oh, yeah, you know, no, totally. So, yeah, 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 yeah. But just the yeah. all-women thing, I think, was yeah, something yeah, yeah. in her mind that was like, that'd be pretty... Something that she couldn't shake off from yeah. her upbringing kind of thing. Yeah. But she's been a nurse, yeah, since yeah. she graduated from college. Um, she has, like, switched units that she worked in. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. And I think that's unusual, too, because our generation... Well, I know, I guess we're not the same generation, but, like, we've changed careers so many times and changed jobs so many times. I can't remember what the average was, but it was, like, you know, b- before the, you turn 50, you'll have, like, however many careers. Yeah. yeah. And our parents... How old are your parents? They're... My mom's 56 and my dad's 65. Right, so your parents are actually around my parents' age. Yeah. My parents had me younger, so I've got parents who are... They're both 61, actually. And, um... 
my dad has had a lot of careers, but he's unusual and seen kind of as a failure because of it during his generation. Yeah. But for us, it's more like, oh, you're following your dreams or you're going up to the next opportunity. Like there's, it's more acceptable for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, and the gender barriers are less so. Right. Um, that being said though, like what you're interested in so far isn't really any kind of challenge gender wise. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's not, certainly not a pink collar career, right. but it's definitely socially acceptable to be in a social helping field, you know, yeah, totally. <laughs> so, totally. which is great. It's, as long as it's what you want, you know, <laughs> totally. um, I mean, across the board, it didn't, you know, a lot of the, you know, maybe sex type careers like engineering and stuff weren't a strong connection for you, you know, but, but not, you know, completely, you know, have you ever looked into them? Like, have well, you done I was exploration? Thinking, I was talking about this, um, Leslie, and I think what's really funny about that is that those are, those are like pretty low for me, but yeah, really, like in my life, a lot of people that are really close to me are all in those type of careers. Interesting. Like sciencey and yeah. well, not engineering as much, but like science and medical type careers. Mm -hmm. Like my mom, my brother, my best friend is getting her PhD in like marine science. One of my best friends has her PhD mm -hmm. or her master's in soil science. Wow. Just like <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And so I could appreciate that, and I like find incredible value in it but it's not ever something that's been my strength mm -hmm. and so I think that's where yeah. it sort of diverged right not because it's not something I'm interested in because right. it is but so what have you done up strength. to this point for jobs like have you had like jobs and like you you were at Mount Holyoke did you work while you were in college I did yeah I was an RA uh-huh okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you've got some real world experience. Yeah. For... <laughs> I was an RA my sophomore year and then my senior year I was like a hall president so mm -hmm. Like in charge of the, the RAs. Yeah. Um, and then I interned one summer at a like political nonprofit, mm -hmm. Montana, super wow. random. Yeah. Um, we did a daycare. Yeah. A couple summers and a summer camp. So yeah, nothing too yeah. like. Yeah. Radical. But a lot of like jobs where you've served like a. Uh, mediator helping role plus leadership yeah. and it sounds like I mean your results here said like you had a leaning towards prefers to take charge in a leadership yeah. role so which, which is I great definitely do. <laughs> for doing advocacy work and all that kind of stuff so that's really good yeah and then um what made you decide on graduate school like you had your BA you were out doing different yeah. jobs what was it that it's like a lot of small things like no like there was no one being like aha moment <laughs> it was just like I I had trouble finding a job after I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. I think I was pretty disillusioned about what like life after college would be like, yeah, as I'm yeah. sure a lot of people are. Yeah. Um, Were you in Vermont at this time? Yeah, so okay. I moved home, and I worked at a summer camp, and then in the fall, I volunteered on the Obama campaign for a while, because it was 2008, oh. which was really awesome, like really, really awesome. And then I um, worked at a daycare for a while, and then I ended up moving to Boston, and I worked at a um, community center mm -hmm. for like a a year and a half, two What years. prompted the move to Boston? So one of the guy that I worked for on the Obama campaign was like starting this nonprofit at mm -hmm. the community center. And so he like brought me on to help him, which was like, not, it was good for like two months and then it went like really quickly downhill. Really? And so, but like the part that was good about it was that like I got to leave my home yeah. and like be in Boston and yeah. all that good stuff. So that part was nice. But so then I started working um, for Ibex, which is like Merino Wool under a clothing company. Anyway. Oh, so that's they're based in Vermont. Sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're based in Vermont and they opened their first retail store on Newbury Street. So I worked there for a long time, which wow. was awesome. Yeah. What were you doing for them? Um, first I just was like a retail associate, but then that by the end I was assistant manager. Wow. Yeah. And I could have been manager, but that was like at the point where I was like, eh, I don't want to go back to school. Yeah, yeah, day. yeah. And so that was really it. So was what was interesting? Just... What was like because um you it sounds like you were successful in retail. You'd probably had the social part right. Definitely. Met. Oh yeah. So what Definitely. was missing? It just, at the end of the day, like, it's like, you're not making a difference mm, in the world. Okay, yeah. And that matters to me. Like, you're really honestly making someone money. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, yeah. it's a retail business. Like, you're trying to make the most money you can. Right. And so that just wasn't really that fulfilling to me. And I really super duper missed working with kids. Yeah. Like, it, there's no kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's all adults. No yeah. one has the, no yeah. One, yeah. So that was part of it, was that I knew I wanted to be with kids. I was pretty certain I didn't want to be a teacher. Yeah. And, and how can you more talk about that? I'm certain I interested in teaching. hearing, like, what was it about teaching that you just knew you just didn't want to Just the pressure. Mm -hmm. It's, like, such intense pressure. Yeah. For having to do so many different tasks. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm with you on that. I just wanted to find yeah. out what your... The tasks and the test scores 
and like the like curriculum and mm-hmm. all the behavior. I don't know. I yeah. just give teachers full credit because I yeah. think it's a really, really, really hard job. Yeah. And I'm more sort of interested in the more like social emotional yeah, aspects yeah. of a child than yeah. just the academic piece. Have you narrowed down for yourself like do you want to work with young children? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. K through five or younger? Yeah, I this summer I worked a little bit with middle schoolers um at the summer camp and I actually really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Um obviously it's not the same as being in a school, so yeah. I'd have to see how that is. Yeah. But yeah, I just I keep thinking like maybe I don't know, I enjoy most things I do. So I'm like, well, maybe I could run right. I, work I, with I have to say there is a trend there, it's true. <laughs> like you've you've had um, you know, not like like a 180 experience with jobs, but you've had a pretty broad spectrum and you sound like you've been successful in all of them, which is great. That's really, really great. So, um, so it's not like you're, what's good to hear is that you're not running from some kind of negative. It's right. not like you're like, Oh, I failed at this and I was sucked at this. And <laughs> my boss said I was crap. Like you're coming from like a, something was missing for me, you know, yeah. which is a really good insight. Right. So, right. So great. yeah, I could, maybe I would like it, like working with high schoolers, but I think for the most part, well, are, you like, gonna, um, are you, I know when we had our previous talk, um, you were interested in doing pre-prac at a high school, so... Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out, because I think splitting your pre... Splitting your pre... My pre-prac might be a little bit overly ambitious. Yeah. But so. are you going to still pursue your K-12 through license? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's... So that's so okay. My so you're still time. going to make time for it. It's, yeah. It's just that pre-prac. You're right. It might... Because it is such limited hours. It, it might be challenging. And you have work on top of it at yeah. C-score. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I don't know you that well. Like, how are you... Like, how many hours can you juggle, like, yeah, with that's classes what, and yeah. work? And well, actually, it was, I mean, because Karen's my supervisor, which is just, like, so nice. She's lovely. Yeah, yeah she graduated from our program. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's awesome. Um, so when she first offered me the position, she said I could, like, decide what I wanted my hours to be, but it could be anywhere between 10 and 20. Mm-hmm. And so not really knowing what, like, working 20 hours would be like and having a full course load, I said, okay, like, 16. And then... That seemed reasonable, but then four courses as well was, like, too much for me. So yeah. I dropped a course and, like, picked up more hours. And, mm-hmm. like, honestly, the best part of my semester has been C-score. Really? Yeah. yeah. I just, I love, I, like, really like working. <laughs> yeah. It's I just stated driven right? Like, what are you... Yeah, so they have, like, right now they have um three grant projects. One is, like, the IES grant, which is, like, they're studying um, an intervention called Student Success Skills. Mm -hmm. Is that the one they're doing in Florida? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's, like, a million, more than a million dollars. I don't know. It's a big, big grant, and it's, like, four years long. and Yeah, really intense. So there's that one, and they have one in um, Everett and Randolph, Uh um, which, like, both of those have different, like, stipulations, but they're evaluators of, of those grants, but they also are, like, helping implement the changes so like one of the changes for example is just like decreasing the ratio increasing the ratio between like mental health workers and students so that's easy because you just hire yeah. more school counselors right but then like they've been very involved in training the school counselors and that sort of thing yeah um and also it's been like presenting at conferences like i presented at masca and then mm-hmm. next yes. friday i'm gonna present at wimca nice. which has been cool very yeah cool. yeah and the previous semester was overseeing all the data entry so there was like a team of like 18 students that were entering data, so wow. creating the schedule and that sort of thing. Um, but it's just been, I just really like working, and so. Yeah. Like working, working in general? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, totally. Yeah. I like being a student, you know what I mean? But yeah. once I started working, and I was like, oh, I get to come home and just yeah. enjoy my evening and enjoy right. my weekends. And right, right. I feel productive in a different way. And that purpose-driven part of you probably as well. Like when you're working, you're yeah. working towards an, an end. And I mean, you have that in grad school as well, but it feels less... It's much yeah. more personal. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm working to finish my degree versus right. I'm working with this group of people so right. that we can expand services to kids in different areas and yeah. and create the research that's going to feed all of these jobs that are hopefully going to open and stuff yeah. like that. Know, <laughs> so, totally. Again, very purposeful. Sam and I were talking about that the other day, too, that, like, mm-hmm. you know, I think for so long all you know is being a student, so that yeah. like identity is enough for you. But once yeah. you've worked and you have other things that are important to you in your life, like, it's hard to just be a student again. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, I definitely I, had that experience. You did. Yeah. <laughs> at first, I loved it because it got me away from being a stay-at-home mom. But when I had my full-time job at Smith last year, it's been hard to go back to being a practical student. I was like, mm. I'm like, I was able to do everything last year. I don't want to like have to ask permission. Right, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, it was different. And I think I still, you know, last year I was like, I can't, I can't believe it felt lucky to me to be in grad school. I guess I can't yeah. believe I get to talk about the things that I want to talk about. Yeah, people are excited about it too, and yeah. have all my courses connect in a way that. 
Like, I thought they did as an undergrad, but nowhere near as close as to how much yeah. they overlap and connect in graduate school. What was your school. undergrad degree? Sociology. Sociology. And then I minored in education. I'm just, I'm sorry to no. like, make fun of you, but like, <laughs> the sociology, <laughs> social, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's, it's be interesting to see, I wonder if anyone's is like more murky or something. I don't um, know how you, I, when how I looked at my, mine is pretty similar to yours. I think my highest were SAI, um, which fits me totally. Um, but I had a different list of things. Like I think maybe my investigative was a little bit higher. Yeah. Which fits with me because I have to analyze stuff and figure out and problem you solve. You do? Yeah, so... I think that's why I like working with um, populations that have a lot of stuff going on because I like the dynamics of like, well, we really have to like have eight people involved to fix this problem kind of thing. I just really enjoy that. So do you like the data piece of like working in schools? I, you know, um, I'm really glad to hear, I, like this is for you, <laughs> but um, what, I, what I'm happy to hear you saying when you're working with C-score is um, you seem to lack what maybe I have more of, which is less confidence with data. Um, I really think it's important. I really like looking at data-driven stuff, but I find that I have an automatic, like as soon as they start showing like Cohen's coefficient or whatever, um, that I start to glaze over. And I could understand it, but there's something about me that just says, that's going to be too hard to shut down. Yeah. And I would rather not be that way. Yeah. So I think that's how a lot of people in our program are. I think so too. Well. And I think the other thing that is maybe not helpful, Rich, <laughs> is... <laughs> is um, is reinforcing that culture like oh this might be hard for you guys and because it kind of gives you an out instead of going you know it's it does make you feel better at the beginning of class to hear you know this stuff at first seems heady but we're going to walk through it and everybody's yeah. going to get it instead yeah. of it's it's a hard line to walk between making people feel like they're not going to get left behind but also making them feel like we already know you're an so don't try too hard so yeah no i think that's one of the that's one of the things i enjoyed about 605 was that like, Karen sort of presented that way, and she's like, you know, I understand that probably none of you went into school counseling because you wanted to work with data and or mm -hmm. numbers, but, like, that doesn't mean that you're not capable of doing it, and we can, it's really important, and it's, like, a, certainly a skill that you're going to need in schools, right. and so for me, like, that class was so transformative in that way because, like, all the, all the assignments I did well on, and I, like, could do, and mm -hmm. I don't know, it was great, and a lot of it isn't really, like, it's a little bit of analyzing, a lot of it is just, like knowing what to do with the data because you don't have to gather the data or that right, sort of right. thing. Like you just have to figure out what to do with it. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it makes me think maybe I should come back and ask if they'd give me permission to audit her class so that I could just, I don't know if they'd let me take it for free, but <laughs> I took 605 with Jay, I believe. Yeah. And that was okay. Um, but, um, I'll talk about it another time. <laughs> and then now I have Ron Hamilton and, uh, he's okay too, but talk about downplaying like your ability, you know, he was really, like, yeah. Like, not in a bad way. It's actually very comforting, but it, again, it keeps me in my comfortable spot. Yeah. Where I'm like, right. oh, okay, this is supposed to be hard, and it's hard right. for me. And, yeah. Right. I'm taking a, um, like, intervention for math and reading class with Amanda Marcotte right now. Mm -hmm. And most of it has been focused on reading intervention because there's just so much more research in that area. And, like, reading is just, in a way more important than math only because yeah. like to do anything or communication yeah, yeah. Like whole you have to be able to read yeah. yeah and so but now we sort of focused or shift focus talking about math um and it's so interesting because all these sort of like all these experiences that i've had with math that were so negative are not like unique to me in any way whatsoever right. yeah you know what i mean it's yeah. really interesting and so like gender definitely plays a role but also does like the fact that there's the curriculum for math instruction in the u.s is like this it's all over the place. Like, you rarely understand why you're doing anything. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous. And other countries where their math scores are higher, like, the curriculum is, like, a lot less. What they have to know is, like, less, but they know it well, and they yeah. know why it applies. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like in this country right now, they're trying really hard to change things, but they don't know what direction right. to go in. And, and they're getting yeah. pulled in eight different directions. My son actually just switched schools. And they were doing math investigations in one, and they're doing another program in this other one, and the yeah. schools are two miles away. Oh, yeah. You know? I know. And I didn't really like math investigations, so I hope this new one is one that <laughs> I find. And they sold it as, like, you know, we want to get into deeper thinking, but we also want to make sure that they have the basics down really well. Like, my husband and I, when we would look at new math programs, were like, I know you want to teach, like, the concepts, but it's really helpful when you're learning 
to just know some of the rote memorization, like one plus one is two, and two plus two you is have four. To, yeah. Because if you don't have that, then you're always having to work through everything so slowly, and then they get frustrated before you get to the concept part. So, so sort of the analogy that we use in class is like if you read a word, you're not like, bruh, oh, puh, uh. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to be able to like look at it and say like rope or whatever yeah. the word is. It yeah. has to be automatic. Yes. Yeah. And so math is the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Like addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction of like zero to twelve. And then division multiplication of 0 to 12. That's like what's supposed to be automatic for you. Right, but it's right. definitely not for everyone. I don't think it's even yeah. automatic for me. I know we had to do it a lot in elementary school, and I found it really helpful. I felt like it took forever to master, but after a while <laughs> yeah. I was like, 12 times 12. But then, you know, I get hung up. I'm like, oh, but what's 11 times 13? <laughs> 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 and That's then true. having to go like, do I add 12 to it to get to the next one, or do I add 11? Well, it's the 11 tables, so I had 11, you know, but all oh, that kind yeah. of, you know, like that totally. sort of stuff. Totally. The long division, that took a while, too. And Matt, I wonder how they're going to, you know, we shouldn't go too much off topic, but I'm glad <laughs> to hear that you're working in math because you're, it sounds like you've come up, you've come up against some of the barriers that people have around, especially gender-specific things, right. but you seem to be, like, like, not, you're approaching it from a, like, wow, this is, like you said, I'm not alone in this, this is a problem, it's not right. a problem of mine. Right. It's a problem of how we're teaching it, and I'm working with people who are looking at how we can change these things, and that's very empowering and I think positive. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've known that since I was young because because I went to a K through eight school, and so my I had to see a like math teacher basically my entire math career. Like once I started, probably fifth, fourth or fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, you know, like, I don't know how old he is now, but he was this old dude. Like, I'm, sh you know, I'm sure he was very much in the mindset of, like, girls don't do math and boys do math. And that was definitely apparent in the classroom. Yeah. And so <laughs> my mom, like, as a result, I don't know, she got me a tutor and blah, blah, blah. And it was great. Good. But I think from, like, a very young age, I was told, like, okay, this is, like, outside of you. It's right. not specific to, like, you. you. Right, right. Yeah. And yeah. you're very aware of that. Um, yeah. And yet now you're working with groups like C Score and right, and it's and not, and it still has never been something where I'm like, ooh, rah rah, I can't wait to work with numbers. And yeah, but yeah. do you find do you feel like you're shying away from it, or do you feel like I would think with no. your group with C Score, like I'm more like when I saw the advertisements for C Score, I was like, no, nah. <laughs> not because I wouldn't find it interesting, but because I thought that I would just be swimming upstream the whole time. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that you're not held back by yeah. that same thing. No, I don't think so. It's also, I think, with working with numbers for me, it's always, like, important. As with anything, even with school counseling, it's, like, thinking about the big picture and, like, why mm -hmm. it's important. That helps yeah. you. Yep. Or I mean, it helps me, at least, a little bit get through, like, the day-to-day -day sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Which is something that, one of the reasons, too, why I, like, wanted to go back to school, because, like, big picture, when I was working retail, was, like, definitely not there. <laughs> it's a small company, and they were, like, treat the employees really well, and, like, it's a sustainable product, and all that stuff was good, but just in terms of, like, how it's changing the world in any way, I was like, yeah, yeah. no. Well, what do you, um, so how, you have another year? A year that? and a half. year and a half, okay. years, yeah. So, when you get out into the your career and you find yourself like looking for jobs or you have a job like what kind of obstacles do you think you're going to encounter like what do you think is going to be challenging for you I honestly think like one of the most challenging things for me is going to be just sort of like the politics of being at school yeah yeah because even like even just in our program I've noticed the politics are kind of intense about like professors and administration and UMass in general mm -hmm. and so and, and, and even going in schools, like, I can feel that without yeah. even really being, like, part of yeah the school culture significantly. And so I think that's going to be a challenge for me, and navigating that. And yeah, yeah. Figuring out how much, like, to involve myself and how much not to. Right, right. And the ways that we can work that to your advantage, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that could yeah. be really tricky, I think. Yeah, I think, um, you know, fresh eyes are always helpful. So if you're coming in... Um, in our practicum class, um, Sam actually was talking about how there's a new guidance counselor there, and the school is very stuck in the, like, this is how we do it, da 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 but having a fresh set of eyes and not being afraid to speak up, he said he's been really inspired by seeing her, like, just come oh. in in a friendly way, like, not yeah. adversarial, but just saying, well, you know, I know that we have this block program, but when you, like, she's using their information against them, kind of. If you're <laughs> saying that you're having a problem with this and this and this and this and this, and you want to change these, and, you know, one of the the best ways to change that would be to adjust the schedule. And she's coming up against like a brick wall 
but just the process of like just kind of like gentle poking a little yeah. bit at first, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think uh, you're not alone in that for sure. Um, everybody I've known who's been in schools, I've heard Caroline talk about it, and just really? um, uh, Jane with being in Amherst High School and how they're so paper driven and running around with their heads chopped off and and feeling like um, I think it's it's partially politics, but a lot of it is just this. Um, getting stuck mentality where right. they're like, this is how we do it. Right. And um, totally. they'll say they want to, and I think the frustration of like hearing them say, we want to be progressive. We want this and we want this, we want this. But then everything they're doing is shooting themselves in the foot to achieve any of those goals and being caught in the middle of it. Yeah. So actually that, that's one of the other things that I'm scared of too, is that I feel like time and time again, you see teachers and or administrators who are like just stuck in their ways and don't want to change. And like, I'm the first to know that change is so hard. But really? Oh yeah, yeah. for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but right now I feel I'm like not so getting excited. That from you from this Thank meeting. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> right now I'm like so excited to go start and work in schools, and I think like you know keeping up in the research and doing all that is so important. But I could see like being eventually I'm like very nervous about being a lot of people that's like so resistant to like and doing anything different. So it's like no, like we've done it this way. Like it works 